Today is May 9th. We are doing Sharp Stats. We're talking to Aaron Boone. We're chatting about the Yankees. So let's do it. Let's talk some Yanks. For talking Yanks. Talking Yanks with old John Boy. John, John Boy and Jake. Talking Yanks with old John Boy. John Boy and Jake. Hello and welcome to Talking Yanks, presented to you by SeatGeek. Code Yanks helps you out there. It's the midweek episode. Yankees have played one game against the Oakland Athletics. Everyone is suddenly good. Oakland does that to a lot of teams. Uh, we're going to talk to Booney. We're going to talk to Katie Sharp. And Jake's wearing his Bader shirt for the hero of the Yankees. John Boy Media shirt. Go get one at the store. You got a John Boy Media shirt on too, Jim. Uh, James Davis, what's going on? Yeah, a little, uh, hopefully a little A's medicine is what the Yankees need. Um, you know, I, I was reliving a lot of the one-run losses today going through. Yankees are currently five and six in one-run games this year that, you know, you tweak a couple of those, and if we take care of the A's, you'd be feeling a lot better. But it's, uh, let's take care of the A's. Um, and I know we got one booty question kind of around that uh, because it leads into, you know, uh, eight games that'll, that'll dictate the vibes of the next two months <laughs> between <laughs> the Rays and Toronto, right? Like, if, if the Yankees take care of some business at home and hold serve against Toronto... With Judge back and Bader back and Sevy on the way, like it can feel different, and that's what we kind of looked for all April. And hopefully, we get to look back in four weeks and do our well. That's right. The Yankees don't care about April, and we just need to remind ourselves and not get sucked in every year. Or if we get punched in the mouth, it's like my goodness, call up Dominguez. <laughs> so uh, excited to get there, Jimmy. Yeah, I'll get through Oakland first. Hopefully everyone stays hot, you know? My, yeah, win. My Sunset Award, Hicks said, no, I, I'm going to homer. So maybe yeah. now, perfect time for a Sunset <laughs> Award? Maybe that's what we're about to find out. But no chance in hell. Um, it was it was cool to see how happy yeah. the bench and dugout were for him. Yeah. It always that, makes me feel like a jerk when you see that. And you're like, ah, oh, shit. He must be going through hell behind the scenes. And the players and They're like guys. his friends. And, and obviously he's going through hell behind the scenes. That reaction... Was awesome. Yeah. Non negotiable. It almost gave me like, <laughs> Jim, you, a, f a famous, non famous story between us. Mm -hmm. Hardo, young freshman Jake Storielli was in a slump in baseball. Yeah. I had just learned what poles were. Uh, and I saw a guy on the varsity team running poles. You run foul pole to foul pole. Uh, he ran poles till he puked. So I told myself, if I don't get a hit today, I'm going to run polls till I puke. I got the worst hit ever, but took it. That's fine. Didn't run polls. Um, it felt like Hicks said something before the game. Mm, like like I'm almost going deep Like today. almost a genuine, like, maybe. if I don't go deep, maybe they should fucking cut me. Yeah, if I don't go deep, That I'm was out. the reaction everyone yeah. had, right? Yeah. Well, I think DJ with a fist pump? Yeah, he was excited for him. What was that about? Like, normally DJ's excitement is that, like, Let's go physical. DJ was filled with, like, joy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Did you see the swing, Hicks? Uh, he was, like, his leg was up early. Like, he was, like, fully ready for that pitch and then s smashed it. And I got to be honest, with the wrist injury and everything we've seen, I didn't know if he had it in him to, like, turn on a ball like that. Yeah. Like, sit on a pitch, turn on it, and just fucking whack it. Yeah, I hadn't seen it. I uh, hadn't seen it in a while. So, ha good for Hicksy. Happy for him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we got some sharp stats. Who's bringing us sharp stats? Or, or Sharp or stats, Jim. I, we've got a couple things that I can speak very well on today. Okay. Okay. Sony Pictures, it ain't over. The new Yogi... Barra documentary, some of the untold stories of the great Yogesh 
Uh, one of the greatest players in baseball history, Jim. Not a lie. Not a lie. Uh, a lot of people get distracted by the fact that Yogi was a lot of other things. He was a fantastic personality. He was a delicious human being. Uh, don't get it twisted. He was one of the best baseball players ever. I watched this, Jim. I went to a, a premiere showing uh, last week, I think it was. Been busy lately. Uh, it was incredible. Uh, the emotions were going. You forget some of the big stuff and some of the little stuff, man. Um, you know, I, I won't give too much of it away, but his return to Yankee Stadium is a very famous day. Um for a lot of reasons. Uh, he's a D-Day veteran, first-generation Italian-American, Jim. How about that? Like Loving that. husband, father, and everything else you do and you don't know about Yogi. So go check it out. It's in theaters May 12th in the New York Tri-State area and L.A. That's what Yogi's got, okay? Mm. New York Tri-State area and L.A. Um, so go check it out in a theater near you. Relax. Have a snack. I had some... What'd you have? What did I have? Come on. I think I had a chocolatey snack. I messed it up. Nice. I just ran hot the whole time. Okay. Um, so click out a link in the description. Go check it out. It's, it's Yogi. He's Yogi. It's Yogi. Was he a good base dealer when he was younger? Uh, I don't think so. Um, you know, I, okay, again, not giving too, way, too much out of the movie. They... They start off talking about how, like, you know, Yogi wasn't the best looking, and he was short, and he was kind of silly. And, you know, it felt like everyone's head in the movie theater turned and looked at me. Ooh, That's what it felt look, like. Looks hmm. like his 1951 MVP campaign, he stole five bases, so... And they were fucking meaningful. I no doubt about that. He did that. it when it counted. Or they were so not meaningful. Rizzo. <laughs> they were so not meaningful. He just walked a second and the other team didn't care. They didn't have in de in, uh, defensive indifference back then. Mm. Just marked everything. I would have loved. Can someone do claps. like? Can someone do a two minute documentary mm. on the birth of in, uh, defensive indifference? Mm. Like, give me like the Ken Rosenthal and the you know pass in or the Baseball Writers of America roundtable. Who is uh, getting boring? They shouldn't steals. get credit for this. Like one guy that mm. all the writers hated. We're like that team's not in, in paying the attention. Players hated them. Taking some not even thinking some, about throwing. some player took advantage of that, yeah, and just racked up steals, and the writers came down hard on him. You might have quit baseball. Well, if it, I don't have those steals anymore, why am I even doing it? It very well might be Yogi. Mm. Maybe. Well, find they liked him. Quit baseball. Find out in the movie. He was, he was a darling. Yeah, find out in the movie. They had, that's the end montage is the, that documentary. Let's go right into sharp stats. See what Katie's got for us. Hey guys, it's the Queen of Stats here, and uh, we know that the Yankees' offense has been struggling a lot this entire season. And there's one aspect of it that I don't think is being talked about enough, and it's actually probably making it even worse, and that's their base running. Um, this is possibly, you know, maybe it's an effect of the terrible actual hitting, um, or it's it's a cause or, or whatnot, but just want to give you some numbers around their base running. So Fangrass has this all-encompassing uh, base running statistic. It basically turns stolen bases, cut stealings, other base running plays, you know, such as taking extra bases, being thrown out, and puts that into context, puts it into a number that is either runs below or, or above average. And right now the Yankees rank for the season, they rank 23rd in this base running statistic. So that's all types of base running. Um, and, they, and that number is about two runs below average. And for context, the best team is about five runs above average right now, and the worst team is about five runs below average. So the Yankees are clearly struggling in this act, in this area. And it's worth noting that they are below average in all three components, and stealing bases, of the other base running plays, and then uh, double, grounded into double plays, which is one of the components. Um, so it's not like they're it's not like they're doing really well at one thing or really bad at one thing and or that they're just they're they're bad across across all three uh, of components of this base running metric and in the last two weeks when judge has been out you know and the offense has really really been struggling to score runs it's been even worse they rank 29th out of 30 teams in this Van Graaff base running statistic and that's three runs below average uh for the for the actual number there um, and then just a couple other things I want to know. Baseball reference tracks a few base running metrics. 
Uh, one of them is extra base taken percentage, so that's taking the extra base. The Yankees rank last in MLB in this. They get a 35% extra base taken percentage, where league average is about 43%. Um, in terms of outs on bases, we know that's a popular one. Um, they actually are just slightly worse than league average. They have 10, where the, the league average is about 9 for teams right now, uh, outs on the bases. But they have the third most outs at home, made at home plate, so it just it magnifies it even more. Um, and they actually have the ninth worst stolen base success rate. Uh, so they're at 74%, and the league average is 79%. So they're not even helping themselves um, in that Jesus. component of base running. Uh, so, I don't know, just another thing to take off uh, for the Yankees' offense uh, and how bad it's been this season. Oh, shit. Um, thanks, Katie, I guess. I mean, I appreciate the data. Jake, I didn't, I didn't know they were bad at this part of the game. I wouldn't have said they were amazing. I'd say Volpe's helping out, and maybe he takes, like, their slightly below average the rest of the team and jumps it up to above average, but that's not even the case. I didn't know. This... I knew that IKF and Rizzo seem to be out on the base paths a lot in my head. I, I, but I don't, I don't even know if that's true, but that's what it seems to be. But uh, I didn't know as a team that they're doing so poorly. Yeah, thanks, Katie. Um, the queen. Uh, okay, stats, Jimmy. What do they mean by Bruce Bochy? My favorite book. Um, <laughs> There's a couple things here because I want to go to stolen bases because right we've all been enamored with Volpe. Uh, he's eleven and zero. He's you know he's kind of been wherever you stand on Volpe. Who he's been on the bases is who we thought right. Like yeah. he's he's that good. Um, I, so stolen base percentage, which is probably the easiest for everyone to get their wrap head wrapped around. You've known this stat for years, and it, it makes sense, right? Um, I, I think you can you can point to two culprits significantly, and it's Glaber and Rizzo. Uh, Glaber has his five steals. Remember when Glaber got a, out hot and he was stealing a lot? I think he was like, I think he was five stolen bases and one caught stealing, and he was only stealing when they were up. We did a little of that. He's now five stolen bases and four caught stealings, which is bad. That's that is bad. bad. Rizzo's zero for two. Mm. So, you know, to butter knife it. For pure stolen bases, I think the Yankees are fine. You just have to understand where Glaber is at. Like, you know, you kind of, you have to throw a yellow light. Like, it's got to be a good stolen base situation against a team that struggles with that. Like, remember when we played Cleveland and they, like, they, they forgot that stolen bases were part of the game? And Rizzo, I mean, we've harped on enough. A fantastic baseball player, 7th percent sprint speed. So the stolen base number doesn't freak me out as much because you can literally say, like, here's your two culprits. Yeah. Um, going from there, uh, the extra base taken, uh, you know, Katie pre-records me. We did jump the Brewers last night, so we're now 29th. Nice. So uh, it's an upward climb. Uh, that's interesting, right? Because I guess... Extra base taken. Uh, I remember when we used to be enamored with pinch runner Tyler Wade because he, but, but, had, but, he but, cooked but. some of the Fugazi I, stats, but we don't. I is it, per, it is it percentage? Yes. Oh, okay. Because I was going to say. I mean, maybe they're just so not used to it. Um. And hey, you know what might have jumped us last night? How about having Harrison Bader back? Yeah. Like tur turning what? Turning what? We basically any Yankee player we've seen hit that ball last night into the gap as a stand up double. Harrison Bader was churning for three. It's his second triple since he's been back. Like we we just haven't seen any of that. So and you know, maybe Volpe gets on a hot streak and hey, Judge has been out. He's normally he's a very good base runner. And we know yeah. he doesn't push it, but he gets very good reads on balls that um yeah, I don't know. It's clearly not what the Yankees are built on, but you still you'd like to think we could be better. Like get us to average than there. second to last. Yeah. And a again, I guess I guess that part doesn't excite me too much because for that number to truly climb, it would be Volpe starts getting on base a lot and taking extra bases. Um, you know, Bader goes and, you know, maybe we've already seen a little influx of that. Judge is a solid base runner, but otherwise it's not how this team is built. So 
<laughs> yeah, but oh, I. What about the outs at home? That seems like something we can ask That's about. Bad. Because that's bad. They just love the contact play, and I thought all of baseball was loving the contact play. Yeah, but maybe it's not all of baseball. It's just them now. Maybe I don't know. I, that's what I'd love to look in to compare the, just like running on contact when you have a runner at third, no matter what, because that that came up like Bader got out right. Was uh, that the play? Hicks and IKF recently have gotten out on the, the contact play. Yeah. I think those are the two. So, I don't like that. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to... uh, Do you know on Baseball Reference where you can find individual outs on the bases? Yeah. I see the team stat there. Click the team name. If you're on the league splits. Well, I've got the team stats. Well, if you click the team name... It should give you by player by player. Yeah, it just takes me back to the normal roster reference page. Oh, there's a way to find it. I look at those a lot. I'll find them. Um, what were some of the other Katie Sharp stats there? The outs on the base. They've been worse with Judge out, so they may have been pressing. Yeah, and that's uh, that's what ran through my mind, right? Like the whole offense is struggling. Um, and again, I've I've started to get a little more hint of hope because Harrison Bader, we just chalked as. League average baseball player, like he's a guy that could have a good year. He's a guy that could be hot and cold, which, again, we would take that after what we saw in April from the lineup, uh, plus judge back. But you have to be realistic. This offense is 26th in batting average, 27th in on-base percentage. So, like, I I think they definitely have been trying to force runs. And, uh, you know, going back to the, the Rays series, they had two opportunities that were borderline sends. Uh, one they held and the Rays botched the relay throw, one they sent and the Rays botched the relay throw. Um, so I don't know. I remember sitting there and being like, hey, the offense is struggling. And well, I think I think Hicksy was coming up on that first send and they didn't send him. And I was like, hey, you got to. Which I have the player. You go to, like, if you're on the 2023 New York Yankees, you just go batting and then click detailed stats. And then it'll, it'll be one of those. So who's got the most outs on the bases? The most outs on the bases is IKF. With two. So I don't know how okay. they're counting that. Because how many does Rizzo have? They only have Rizzo has one. So, <laughs> no, that's not caught stealing then. So yeah. Sands caught stealing. Um, I wonder if they combine them. It doesn't seem like they combine them. So not caught stealing, just outs on the base paths. IKF has two. He also has one caught stealing. DJ has two. He also has one caught stealing. Um, And then if you go like caught stealing leaders, Glaber's got four and he's got one. So that's a total of five. Uh, IKF's got a total of six. I think he's going to have the highest combined. Uh, Cabrera, no. No, hold on. IKF's got a total of three. So Glaber seems to have the most if you want to combine them. Right. The four caught stealings are. Oh, and they also don't include pickoffs, which then IKF got picked off. So he's now two outs on the base paths, one pickoff, one caught stealing. So he's at four. And Glaber's at four caught stealings, no pickoffs, one out on the base. He's at five. He's at five. So Glaber's five is the most. I'm trying to think. What um But what's Rizzo? Because Rizzo's gotta be rivaling him. Besides contact plays, which has been a hot topic, and yeah, I'm I'm interested. Um, they've got five outs at home. Outs at home, not contact infield in plays. What what jumps out in your guys' head? Have there been any? I don't like, know. Like I'm, I'm actually interested like, to see what IKF's out on the base path is. If it's not a caught stealing and not a pickoff, and he's got one, out I think at it's home. contact play. One out at home. He's got one of those. So there's one other that he got thrown out at second or third on like. Like, fielder's choice doesn't count towards this, I would guess. Yeah, no. So maybe he tried to go first to third and didn't make it. The base running could be better. Runner is out while making a base running play. Out advancing on a fly ball. Out attempting to reach another base on a hit. Doubled off on a line drive. 
That's tough. Or out attempting to advance on a wild pitch or pass ball. So it could be that's not like a caught stealing. Yeah. I wonder if it's the line drive because some of those are bad. Some of those does are. Does not include pickoffs, caught stealing, or force plays. They also have the bases taken. Volpe's had the most bases taken, and he has the uh, but uh, Franchi Cordero had the highest extra base taken percentage, mm. and then Volpe next, and then Cabrera after that. But that's not that high. Yeah, I, I guess the hope would be, <laughs> and I, I don't know, it's tiered. It's hopefully Bader continues to be good. Um, Volpe get on more. That's going to cook the book space running wise. Um, and hey, Oswaldo kind of deserves. Uh, a little bit of love because yes he had a horrible april the ops plus is still bad he's had two good games and hopefully he can build on that yeah um how about him five st- stolen bases and no caught stealings like i don't i know yeah. i know we talked about that last time i didn't i don't have as waldo as that guy in my head that's what you said last time yeah i have him as can be but it's not his main game it's kind of it i think maybe he's more under the radar or i guess that's what i'm saying he's the second best stolen base guy on the team maybe he's lucky right now and it's you know the league's gonna catch up glaber effect will happen where you're like oh wow glaber's running a lot and then you're like "Uh uh-oh okay let's as waldo sprint speed don't get overzealous what do you think it is i don't know i i don't love sprint speed how they calculate it's pretty dumb it's not an average speed so gives you a number wow 78th percent is that, I guess that's pretty good. Yeah. What's IKF? IKF, Kiner Falafa. Uh, he is sprint speed 59th. Last year in a bigger sample, he was 79. And coming into last year, I want to say he was, yeah, 75th, I think was the number when we were doing PPPs for him. I remember that. Nice. Long legs. Um, get better at base running? I don't know if there's a solution to that besides personnel. I'd say get on more and then run the bases better. Okay. I'm not going to disagree. Added to my analytics binder. It's a nice binder. Leather bound. Plastic. It's ripping. <laughs> Clearly. Well, that is the sharp stat of the day. We do have a our the Boone banter coming up, which uh I'm excited for. Aaron Boone. Good. Aaron Boone. Brought to you by Vizio. Vizio, Jim. Yeah. I was laughing before. Because you went on the bus. I saw the Yogi Bear movie. Yep. I went on the Vizio bus, which was pretty crazy with Joe's um and yeah, man, Vizio, you know them by this point. Award-winning TVs and sound bars. Uh, they've got a special like gaming TV, if you're into that world, that Joe's was freaking out about. Uh, and they said V, Vizio value. A-V, they're, Vizio they're into that, value. AV. Uh, they also offer MLB Network totally for free right out of the box. Bong. Damn. So you might like baseball if you're watching Talking Yanks. Uh, Vizio could be your hookup there. Cast games from your phone, tablet, laptop, big screen via Chromecast or Apple AirPlay. Vizio has always been the MVP of value. So head over to Vizio.com. Check out how you can elevate your viewing experience all season long. Whatever your budget or the size of your home, Vizio has you covered. The perfect TV and sound bar combo. Check out the link in the description. Go get yourself 11 Vizio TVs. Ooh, wow. Wow. It's Boone. All right, Booney. Oh, did you say? I think I didn't hear you. If you, unless you mouth something for me to read your lips as a test. <laughs> do you have? I don't. Is that a test? Isn't what? that what you do? Wow! <laughs> wow! Okay, now we're at it. Shit! Damn now it! We're at it. Uh, how you doing? Good to see you. What's up, guys? I'm good. How is the turf? <laughs> the turf and the drop that's what uh we're we're now referring to it as the turf yeah um the turf's the turf at the drop it's uh you know seems short this year tight mm. oh okay Older. yeah we can look into that we can we can More get hits. the internet on it or speed huh? 
Uh, I mean, it's always kind of fast. It's probably the same exact. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good theory. Uh, I get first hard hitting question. What's the move for judge today? What's the what? The move for judge today. Uh, I got nothing for you. Yet. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Ramirez down. Is it, is, is, are you going to go an extra batter or will be, there be two moves? We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, be, we'll have to do two moves, but we got to do the other one and just make sure we're, we're in line and, we got to talk that out a little bit still. So sorry, guys. Got nothing. For Let's you. talk it out. What do you yeah, need to hear? Yeah, we'll weigh in. The pitching or the the uh, the offense one position position player. You need there to talk you know. out. Sorry. Yeah, we got to talk it out. All right. So, who's okay. we yeah, here? <laughs> yeah, who's we? Talking out with you guys. <laughs> we had a good thing going here. Um, <laughs> all, all right. right. Well, all right. Praza first um, first segment over. <laughs> I want to. Uh, we we got Can't a few. Have all, guys. Can't have it all. We we got a few uh, games and segments lined up for you. Jimmy's got a couple. He's really excited for. Uh, I want I want to check something off quick that uh, we we have some theories around it, but I think you you can give us the final answer. Uh, Oswaldo and IKF. We saw them flip flop third base and right field uh, from the turf. Uh, Look at you're smiling. You th- you already thought we were going to ask this, so I no, I was I was actually no one asked, and I was, you know, in the last I was like, huh. yeah, yeah. We, well, we were watching the post games because we're not trying to repeat questions you get there, and we were uh-huh. a little surprised no one asked too, and then we went through like a uh, like a true detective red tape on a wall theory of our thoughts on it, and but we but we could be going crazy. So uh, what's going on with? The first one and then the next, the uh, flip. <laughs> Nothing. Uh, I just liked it that way. In, in that, the there's no that way day. you have. To- yeah, literally, <laughs> literally, like um, because IKF had finished the the previous game in right field when Bader came into the game, and I just liked it. And then with you know Garrett going, I just liked the same alignment with rolling IKF right back out there because he hasn't played a lot on uh, right field. But I just liked that he ended the game keep them out there. And then, you know, as we came home, you know, kind of talking on the plane with Mendy and, and Louie, it was like, you know, I knew we were going to go same lineup probably. And I'm like, should we, should we flip Cabrera and IKF back though? And, uh, and we just li- literally settled on yes. And uh, lo and behold, a um, couple of really nice plays over there by, by IKF. Do you want to hear our theory? But literally it was nothing – other than that, other than I wanted to switch it uh, yesterday. Okay. Do you want to hear our theory? Just uh, sure. because maybe uh, you'll you'll because maybe you'll you get, thought this yeah. and you didn't even know. Yeah, maybe you or you'll get into the mind of the craziness that is uh, this podcast and trying to figure out what you guys are doing. Okay. Jake. Well, yeah. Jake came up with, and I fully agreed with Jake. I was like, "Yeah, that's it." Is that you thought you might pinch hit Bauer for IKF because he's not a switch hitter and it's righty lefty. And at that point, that means as Walt Bauer can only play the outfield, not third base. So instead of making Cabrera move from outfield to infield, middle of the game, you start IKF in the outfield, and that is less moving parts. It's a really sound, good, thought out thing. But no, because okay. I, I would have, I don't, I don't ever have an issue, like definitely knowing wh- where I was hitting IKF, but that could have been in play last night if you get the right right handed guy in there on the shoot I, I could shoot bowers and and just move move cabrera that's so what we that, thought i said that, if there's actually, a pinch hit today we're on to yeah, it yeah that that actually did not okay really but someone before. comes to you on the staff mendy or someone and says hey what about this and they present what we said that's not crazy yeah. you'd be like oh that's a good thought. no oh no no no. that's the All kind right. of things we talk about and like you know if, if there's ever something nuanced about the lineup or whatever um you know when we're kind of scrambling over a little bit, like, ah, should we hit this guy here or here today? Sometimes those thinking out like, oh, what could we see from a matchup standpoint? How, what protects us the best? All those things go into that. So, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's actually a great thought by you guys. Good job by us. Can you quote, quote that? Yeah. Uh, just say that's a great thought. Tweet yeah, that tweet out that now. Out. Um, all right, next <laughs> up, we have a segment because you liked our game at the end of last show, so I built another game. Uh, for this episode, 
And it's about uh, the bullpen, a uh, bunch of bullpen decisions from the since we talked to you last. Okay. So the game is called Defend, Regret, Debate. We're going to give okay. you three moves. You get to choose one that you say, I defend that to the death. We're not even talking about it. Okay. Then you have to put the one you regret the most, and then you have to choose one to debate, and we'll we'll chat about it. Okay. All right, the three options are taking Herman out in the ninth at 88 pitches uh, with uh, one two outs left to go. Second uh, one okay. is okay. bringing Clay in for just one out in the ninth in the tie game when Marinaccio we, we, was at 23 pitches and cruising. Okay. And, okay. the, and the third one is um, uh, Cordero stealing outs with Cordero in the seventh when, when King was available. Okay. So, um, all right, I'll defend the Herman one. Um, oh, so, okay. Um, Rosario's coming up. Um, if we get him out, I feel like we win the game. Um, I wasn't going to let Rosario stick one in the gap or get another hit. And then we're all of a sudden in a bad situation. Um, I love the Holmes Rosario matchup. Like that was like, and, and I was like giving Domingo a hitter at that point to get on. And if, if, uh, if Holmes gets Rosario out, now we've got, uh, we're up two nothing runner on, if it's not a double play, it's two outs with, with the three lefties coming up that I'm confident that he'll at least keep in the ballpark. And essentially he's got to get one of them out. Um, and I just love that matchup. And in the end of the day, he hits a little soft comebacker to him that, you know, we, we don't make the play on and that ends up costing us. Um, so, um, and at that point I absolutely, I, I feel like that was the right move without question. Okay. Throw it out for now. Gone. Yeah. Rosario sure. had two, had a hit on the day off Herman, and he had, uh, I think, two hard hit, like 100 mile per hour uh, out it, of the three. To, so, me, okay. to me, that was one that I was not going to get to with a runner on. Like, that was the matchup I absolutely wanted. Clay makes the play. Fine. Gone. We'll All put right. that in our rear view. Next up, what do you want to go, debate or uh, regret? All right. Which one was it again? You got Clay for one out in the ninth tie game. Uh, Marinaccio was at 23 pitches and, and kind of cruising. Or Cordero instead of King tie game in the Let's, seventh against the Rays. Um, all right. The Cordero one. Cordero one we could do. Is debate, debate. or regret? Debate? debate? Okay. You have the floor. Yeah. So, so there are a lot of. So that was going into the seventh. We're at Siri, Diaz, Franco. <clears throat> we were a little short. I didn't have Ron that day. We were just a little short at the back end where I didn't want to get Cordero and Holmes with all their lefties and lefties on the bench still in a bad matchup if I ran out of outs at the end. So, yeah, if King was perfect, he was on two days rest, three innings would have been probably in play but I also felt like I would have potentially run out of outs and left myself in a bad spot at the behind, behind um, King. So I, I wanted um, the, the given of a spot that I knew I could go through with Cordero, knowing I'm going to have King up with them to clean up that inning and go the two plus or better yet, if Cordero gets through that seventh inning with the two righties and the lefty and a Rosa Reina there, I'm in a good spot. So um, that was the calculus there. There was some thought to go into King right away, but I just felt like I had the lane that I preferred for Cordero and I was going to take it. The, the counter argument from our side or my side, I guess, would be it's a tie game in the seventh. Uh huh. And you got to hold them to win and you got to score to win. So the, the thought process, I guess, just working backwards, you're, 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 you're saving King for potentially the end. Uh, I'm not saving him. Well, uh, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I guess cherry that, picking the, the spot. That, yeah. that ends up working out if for both believe, sides. So Cause like, if you're going to use them, he comes in when the Yanks are down and now I'll, you know, fans are saying like, "Damn, now we're using King on a 
potential losing day. Instead of having King hold it and then tell the offense go out there and, and score a bunch, maybe you run into a bunch of runs and then Cordero's got more leash to work with or whoever's coming out or next. he's running through a bad part of, of he's running through worse matchups and I'm probably not going to get to the end there with King and at the end of the day Cordero gets a fly ball to left and we, we didn't make play like I mean yeah no that's true I hear you a little bit but and and trust me there was us talking about should we go right to King now you know, so I, that's why I debated this one. It's This one to me is debatable. Yeah, because you talk yeah. about how, you know, attacking the best part of the order with the best pitcher. And mm-hmm. after Siri, it's the top and King's available. And that's, you know, you've you talked about using Clay that way when, when he was maybe still using him that way. So then my, in our heads, like, well, this is that scenario. It's a tie game. King's the best available of all the options left. And they are got nine and then top coming up. Yeah. Fair point. Which would leave no regrets, regrets. Um, Clay for one. Clay for one. And I'll, I'll tee this one up a little bit. This was um, after uh, the previous one we talked about, Herman. He comes in and he gets dinked and dunked. Uh, from our end, and it, it feels like you guys have done this in previous years, and it, again, you can defend it a little bit, but you will have to regret it. That's the game. Yeah, you left it in that bucket, unfortunately, well, even if you don't want to verbalize it. <laughs> what, was that yeah. a little bit – I mean, was that just kind of trying to get Clay a win? Like, if he comes in for that one out, he's feeling good, and instead it ends up bloop and a bloop, and now it's not the result. A little bit of that. So, Ron, that day we went in as, as kind of an inning – um, and he ends up going two ups, and that would have been his fifth out. He was pretty efficient, so I was comfortable leaving him in there, but it was also past what we um, had had kind of decided we were going to get from. We we're like, let's let's keep let's keep Ron in an inning today. So I already went over with him. I got to straw there with two outs at the bottom, and and I felt like just exactly with clay i'm like let's get him in now in a matchup that's really good even even back-to-back matchups there or no wait who hit the blue yeah, yeah it was i think it was eight nine in there oh, the order pitcher. they yeah. pit, they so pitched yeah. straw and, and gallagher and oscar pinch hits for gallagher yeah correct so i'm like you know we're in a pretty good spot here that especially coming off and just even though I feel like Clay's throwing the ball well, just the noise around it, like, come in, let's get this righty out to end this inning. And then I know I got him. And I preserved Ron where I was a little further than I wanted to go with him already. Um, uh, so come in, you know, ball gets in the lights and then the bloop and, you know, then it's a, it's obviously not a good ending. So, um, so that one, yeah, probably, probably would have just played it more straight and said, you know, have Ron finish the inning and, and let's roll with, with Clay here uh, it, to start the next inning. And with Clay, did, did anything change after that? I mean, we, next time we see him is in the seventh inning. Um, and I don't know if that was the, you know, let's have him get the hardest lane. I'm blanking right now. But part, right. Of, part of our thought process, a little bit like with that move is, it sometimes feels like Clay's first half last year catapulted him into getting almost like lockdown closer treatment, like the same way uh, Araldis Chapman deserved to get. And, you know, obviously Mariano or like closers that are like, this is the closer. He's the ninth inning guy. And it was like, well, only half a season where Clay really was performing like that. And yeah. in our brains, like we kind of can get away from that. It seems like in Tampa you did. And, is that any that thought process? I mean, are you there with us or disagree or? Yeah, I disagree. Okay. Um, first off, I'd go back to the season before too when we got him the final two months, and 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 I'd go to then to last year, then to hit kind of a hiccup in the season that was a little bit back, you know, shoulder related to to fully I feel like recovering in the postseason. Um, the other thing I would say is I don't think he has gotten that that incumbent established longtime closer, you know, from spring training kind of saying I'm going to put him in situations that I think is the best. Do I think that's going to be closing out a lot of games? Yeah. 
course. There was a game early in the year already where, you know, he was doing well where I brought him in in the eighth. And people were like, oh, why, you know, why are you bringing your closer in the eighth? It's like, because I've said this is how it's going to be. Like, I feel like we can get, you know, big ninth inning outs or close out game outs from literally four, five, six guys on our staff. Like, I feel comfortable with it. I am maybe even more inclined with with Clay just to keep him part of that. And, and whether it's the ninth inning or whether it's it's the seventh or the eighth, like putting him in the best position where he's set up to, to be successful. And um, I think I've gotten more and more to that point, but to a degree I was there at the start of the season as well. Is there any thought to this goes with Clay and the rest of the bullpen and, and Canely's out. So that is a, a part of this that hurts, but going so two seam heavy with relievers, right? Like we're picking up relievers and we're getting that two seam or that sinker going that a lot of them don't have a pitch to get lefties out right now. If you look at the numbers, uh, you know, Clay's numbers against lefties are gaudy. Same with ago when he was around in last year. Um, it's Marinaccio because he's got the changeup. Canely will probably be a great lefty guy because he's got the changeup. Wandy is a lefty and he's got it. But uh, is there anything to that? Like it, it almost seems by pitch design, we're almost cornering some of these guys into splits. You, you just you just kind of ran through just a perfectly balanced pen. But right now, like Clay versus lefties, does that does that worry you? If he's getting like he's the closer, he's getting the best lane. Like, what if that best lane is right, lefties? That's, that's why I want to put him in in great lanes. Okay, I mean, so it is. That, it is, but but yeah. I think the way you talk through that is like, yeah, we got Low who who has the changeup too that makes yeah. him really good, especially when he's rolling against lefties. But then you got Tommy Marinaccio, uh, uh, obviously Wandy. Um, I'm, I'm liking kind of Ian Hamilton against both with that, with, with his pitch. His numbers are great all over. Yeah. That's effective versus left. So um, I, I do feel like, you know, especially as we get more and more hold down there, I feel like it, that that's why I'm not, you know, whenever I, you guys have asked or people have asked about like, Oh, do you wish you had more lefties or yeah. In a perfect world, you have that nice balance of two or three lefties, four or five righties. But I'm like, you know, as you just ran off accurately there, I do feel like we have a very complimentary bullpen of arms that, um, you know, are capable of different matchups. But it's why I do am even more and more married to just trying to put guys, you know, in spots where I feel like they're, they can be most successful. Yeah. And the reality is when Clay gets really dominant, he, he can, yeah. he, he'll, he'll get both handed out. Yeah, uh, and when Canley's back, it helps a lot because right now yes. there's not enough to lefty attackers. Yeah, but the bullpen's been pretty good. Yeah, it's been pretty good. The bullpen has been pretty good. Although I could, yeah. if I wanted to, I could say with the Cordero one, which we debated and we said it's a friendly debate, if you believe in six or seven guys in the back end, then you could have gone King. It's over. Uh, that was defend regret debate. Booney, you love games and we love that about you. Um, <laughs> we're... we're we're going to go to some offensive stuff. I, I think I want to hit this one quick because Jimmy, uh, Jimmy's our company's analytics department, yeah. and he got into some real numbers. But a topic that's been big around our office, we have a lot of Yankee fans, is, and it's kind of going around, especially with Judgy back. Is, is there going to be any consideration to slide and Volpe down the lineup a little bit? If you know, Because he's there's been some up and down games at the top of the lineup, and with Judge and like DJ's been hitting well that – um, yeah, you know, there's, there's that conversation seems pretty natural. So I want to see where, yeah, we'll see as we get, as we get more, more guys back. Um, um, that's, that's definitely a possibility, but I think it's also in, important to see both the last few days did in some tough luck, you know, hits ball the fence to start the game yesterday. Um, smokes another ball that third baseman makes a really good play on him. Um, same in Tampa, I think back-to-back -back days, he hits bullets to start the game for outs. Like, so it's been a little bit of that. And then all of a sudden when you, when you haven't gotten some results and you've smoked two balls and then you punch out, it's like, oh, he's really struggling, which I don't really see it that way. Well, I, I just, feel like, yeah, you just seem but, like you have enough yeah, guys. As we get longer, as, right. as we get more guys back in the mix, yeah, th that could, 
that could be in play. But I, I like the, you know, the consistency of his approach and, um, you know, really the consistency of his at-bats. He's taken his lumps here and there, um, but I also feel like it's going to serve him well and he'll process it well and learn from all this stuff well. And um, I've been really pleased with what he's doing. So it won't be tonight. Uh, DJ's I'm giving DJ a day today. So, okay. Uh, there's your breaking news for you. Wow. <laughs> nice. Uh, Get my phone right. out. Booney, I was, I was deep in the numbers and okay. I was at uh, your career baseball reference splits. Do you know, yeah. uh, Ask me don't, on don't pitches tell. in three one <laughs> counts. Uh huh. Do you know uh, any of your slash line three one? You, were three you a, were you a big attack the three one pitch? Yeah, I was. I think so. I would say it was probably pretty good. Career four oh two batting average, uh, seven twenty nine slug, and one dot three seven six OPS when you uh, when you put that three one pitch in play. Oh, is that good? That's very good. It's very good. Right. Uh, here's the bad news. The yeah. Yankees are horrible in 3-1 counts. The 30th in batting average, 30th in slugging, 30th in OPS, 30th in um, swinging at fastballs in the zone, and 30th at taking strike two looking. Is this an organizational thing where we're not attacking no. Like the three one pitch in the zone, people make careers off that. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. Uh I was jarred because I felt like yeah. the philosophy right now is attack early. I don't hate that. It it clearly seems to be, you know, people are swinging early, but yeah. not swinging late at all. And I went and looked at it and I was like, oh my God. Um But yeah. then the, but then they're tenth in swinging at pitches out of the zone. Well well. That's going to improve. It's going to okay. improve. And look, I mean, we haven't, you know, as an offense overall, we we're we're probably in the lower half of the league of of, of scoring right now. Um, that's going to change. Um, and with that, you know, you're going to be able to uh, cherry pick, or you're going to be able when you're not scoring a lot of runs, you're going to be able to find a number of categories where, ooh, this needs to get better. Why is this? You know, so but it's uh, it's a bit jarring. Be, so Bader uh, Bader got his triple yesterday, and that was the third hit on the three one count all season, and the first extra base hit. So it's it's I know you can cherry pick numbers, but that was a a bit jarring at a team. That'll change. We'll okay. get, we'll get there. You We're start. I mean, it's there. Oakland. You just put the swing sign on. <laughs> you know, just like fucking go attack this ball. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see a three one count today. Um, you guys are gonna pop into my head. Yes. Like, yeah. Okay. I, I like happen. that. All right. The last thing I have is let's, let's look up in, later in the year at that one. All Hopefully right. Okay. Uh, we'll mark that down. Different story. So here's here's trivia for you to end to end the show. Unless Jake, you got any quick ones. Um. What did I have? Uh. N- Nothing too crazy. I just want to double check. It was Weissert up, Peraza down, judge off the IL, or did we not cover that? <laughs> yes, those are the facts so far. Okay. Wow. Okay. okay. Uh, all right, so I, this is where that uh, info stemmed from. Uh, the trivia of what count do the Yankees have the most hits on? Do you have a guess? There's no backdoor well, trick to this right. at all. It's just what counts. Um, most hits. And this is in the league. Oh, oh? No. Uh, or this just is, as a team. As a team. As a team. Oh, oh? No. Oh, I was going to give you options. Sorry. 2-2, two, 2-0, two, two, oh, one, one, or 3-1. But now you know it's not 3-1. Um, I'll go 1-1. One, 1-1's one. One, in second place. 32 hits. The 2-2 two, two count. Interesting. The Yankees have, they have 34 hits uh, on 2-2 two, two counts. Which batter do you think has the most Hits in that count. Two two. Rizzo. Yeah, he's tied. Tied, tied for tied. first with. I gave you such an easy trivia boon. There was three possible answers here, so you know they'll get tougher. It was Rizzo, Judge, Glaber. All have six hits. DJ's got four, but two homers. We've really put an emphasis on two two. Yeah. Hit. Yes, year. that's been that's when you they, that's when you're throwing the swing sign out. 
That's right. Uh, yeah. So two two count. If, if you see that, someone's going. Right. Someone's getting a big hit. Three one two yeah. two. Okay. Three one the three <laughs> the three down. one stuff was jarring, and then I looked at the two zero stuff, and it was an, another fastball count, and it was the same thing. It was like all there. So there's something going on. I let's swing fastballs in the zone on hitter counts. I hear you, brother. I, I can send a, a package of your highlights. Mm. Three one <laughs> count if that's what you need to show the guys. I hear you. Okay. What do all it. these hits have We're, in common? Hey. Hey, we're going to do some damage on three one this year. He's okay. All right. This will be the big turnaround. I'm on the World Series DVD now. And then the podcaster, <laughs> let him know. That's right. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Booney. Appreciate it. All right. Have a good week, guys. See ya. See you, Skip. You too. And that was Bantering with Boone, mm. brought to you by Vizio. Jake, that was nice. He admitted a regret silently. Didn't say the words, but said, yeah, okay. I was trying to get Clay some positive feelings it's a dumb sport um like imagine like we were saying dumb people will be happy that the tone was chummy throughout that interview but we, you know getting yanks manager to somewhat regret something and admit why like and then have conversations about like even the cordero like it's a debate and i because i said uh right. you know but you've said use your best reliever against the best lanes and he was like yeah that's a fair counter that's that's like his answer and so. and i think the other thing that's funny is like just imagine how different it would have been if they lost to oakland last night which was a 2-2 game in the sixth yeah like again like none of that happens but, which well, just well, makes baseball but so we ridiculous. did have a lot of our segments the same way a better way to go into conversations i felt that was more um enjoyable and, and he's more open when it's like a bantering conversation to actually give you like, yep, that, that would be. I don't know if we were recording, but before we started, told Boone like, oh, you know, you liked last week's games. We got more games. And he got giddy. Yeah. He got giddy like a, a schoolboy. We got stats. We got games. We're, oh, we're I'm in the weeds. In, we're turning into a damn carnival for you because you said you liked the last game. I like the what? The uh, the last oh, right. game. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> <laughs> And they will get better in the 3-1 count. That's awesome news. That's huge. There's no way he knew they were last in the league at every offensive category. No, but I, I do think it's funny because, you know, Boone has the baseball player side, which we talked about, that he's like, you you guys think we're really not going to hit in 3-1 counts this year? And it's like, well, you haven't. So, so I, far, I believe you can. Yeah, you're just like the very worst. But you ain't. And you're, they're not, but it's not even that you're not hitting, you're not even swinging. Bader's got the only extra base hit. That's pretty crazy. 3-1. Yeah. The other was Oswaldo Cabrera hit a comebacker that hit the pitcher, single, mm. and Volpe hit one right past uh, the shortstop, single. Three it, hits. It was... And we're cool with the singles. I, I did appreciate that... You know, his counter there was good. That You know, the offense hasn't been good, so you're going to be able to find stats that are bad. Yeah. Which but but not, wrong, that bad. not that bad. But maybe let's get those. Let's start checking Identify a couple. Identify one that you can maybe. Let's get the base running a little better. Katie Sharp talked about that. Let's get the 3-1 going. Jimmy Sharp talked about that one. Auto swing. Boom. Bong. Bong. All right, I think that's the episode. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. And also, thank you to everyone who has tuned in to Blitzball yes. Battle 3. Holy it is smokes. our most watched warehouse series game. The TikTok's going insane. The, actually, the Ooh. Facebook views are absolutely incredible. Yeah. YouTube views are up 20%. So if you haven't checked it out, I mean, it's a, it's a very fun, it's like reality show versus... Uh, actual competitive sport, and then Moylan and Rose being incredibly silly, and Team Baggage, which is Jake and I, uh, may have the most talked about game mm. of Warehouse history coming up. Mm. Teaser. Promo. <laughs> yeah. Tuesday so. as this is releasing, no, next game tonight, right? Yep. Sunday night, Tuesday night, and Thursday night. There's a game. And the live chat's fun. If you get in there at 6 o'clock, everyone's talking, reacting. There's actually like... It's uh, a good community. Two guys made a podcast about it. Yeah. Where they, like, it's basically almost a Talking Yanks format. They're doing burns. We're getting podcasts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're doing burns of the games, and then they're doing reviews and thoughts. And then, uh, you know, Feldman, shout out to him, who's doing post-game recaps, yeah. uh, how we do yeah. the uh, Yankees uh, post-game recaps for Blitzball Battle. So, yeah, it's picking up a lot of steam. It's awesome. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Go Yanks. Tell them, Grams. Go Yankees. Go Yankees.